The following program contains material that may be offensive to some viewers. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know, you can't explain, but you feel it. You've felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm quoting from? Shut up and get to the point! Hello, Internet. I'm Schrodinger's trans cat, and I'm here to talk about being transgender in space. Now, you might have wondered, am I trans, or am I just imagining it? Maybe you're not trans yourself, but you know someone who is, and you're trying to understand their point of view. Maybe you're wondering how they could have been transgender all this time, and you never noticed what was going on with them. Why are some people trans? Do we even know the answers yet? Or are we still figuring it out? Is transgenderism even a real thing? Or is it some kind of fad? Phew, I know how tricky these things can be. I'm Schrodinger's trans cat. You know, the famous quantum physics cat in the box? You think you've got problems? I might be alive. I might be dead. I might be trans. I might be scissoring my way out of this box. I would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange Oh yeah, I should probably mention this just in case. If you're still young enough to find kissing icky, this video series might kind of bore you. It's not actually about space, it's about kissing and other gross things grown-ups do. So please turn it off and go watch something more interesting, okay? I'm sorry, but this is not the time or place for children. I must ask you to leave. And to everyone else, a word of warning. This video series contains satire. Do not panic. Are you making fun of me? So before I poke fun at anyone else, you all recognize my accent. Right? Australia was originally founded as a settlement for British convicts. Australia is entirely peopled with cryptos. Watch your camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like an introductory episode. So new viewers know what's happening? Shut up and get to the point! I'm not going to talk much about female to male transgender people. You know, trans men going from girl to guy. Name changed, new identity. I'm mostly going to concentrate on male to female, trans women, guy to girl. Hold it right there, mate. Ugh, can't you wait five minutes? I haven't even finished the introduction bit. Yeah, but you've already pissed off half the trans people watching this with your offensive approach to punctuation. Okay, okay. Everyone, this is Transbat. G'day. My frenemy here is going to be interrupting to argue with me whenever I say something more controversial than average. Starting with this lack of a space here. Trans women ought to be two words. And if you in the audience didn't know until now just how touchy the whole transgender topic is, yes folks, people can and will judge you all the way to Hitler based on where and when you press the space bar. You think the name of this video series is a coincidence? Come on, mate. You're the one making a big deal out of it. It's not like gay man is one word. Okay, look, I don't want to get into a grammar fight in the first five minutes. Here's how I see it. If I use trans woman two words. That implies that a trans woman is a particular kind of woman, just like a gay man is a particular kind of man. But if I use trans woman, one word, that suggests that she's a particular kind of person. Whether she's really a woman or really female is left ambiguous. And as a cat in the box, I approve of quantum uncertainty. All I know is my gut says maybe. Do not panic! Do you think what I just said was some incredibly transphobic? I would not say such things if I were you. Well, not long ago, I would have agreed with you. That's a bloody outrage, it is! But a lot of people find this transgender thing confusing. We've got to start at the absolute basics. It's difficult to explain. Can't get my head around it. I'm old-fashioned. As such, it needs to be questioned, re-examined. 
So, grit your teeth and hang in there, okay? Please don't go. Please, Neil. You have to trust me. Besides, I'm a cat. You ever seen us do what we're told? What could possibly go wrong? While other people were out living their lives, I wasted mine watching TV. Because deep down, I knew it might one day help me save the world. You're a visionary. I'll use characters from old TV shows, movies, and cartoons to represent transgender women, scientists, and a few other people. But that's to keep things abstract and avoid getting too personal when we get to some sensitive, controversial stuff. You're a chick, right? Why? You have a biology test today? You don't need to have seen any of these shows to get the point. Most of these characters aren't actually trans in the actual shows. I'm just using them as symbols. You know, like using Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd to talk about gun laws. Which, fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. It would probably help if you've seen the Matrix movie though. And when I do show a transgender character, I'll use examples where the actor isn't trans, just playing a role. That might annoy you, but I'm going to be talking about stereotypes and various other uncomfortable things. Where are you going? And I don't want anyone to get the fictional characters I'm using as examples mixed up with the real lives of the actors. I don't know what's real and what's not. But before we get to all that, I'd like to take you through some gender astronomy 101. Do not panic! Some of what I'm about to say might seem obvious, but we can't really talk transgender until we've talked gender and sex, if you know what I mean. I do this slowly, try to stay with me. After all, the old-fashioned word for transgender was transsexual, which has led to all manner of confusion. Like thinking transsexualism is the same thing as homosexualism. So let's go through the basics and talk about the differences between gender, sex, and sexuality. Of course, there will be times throughout these videos when you might be like, That's not entirely accurate. Full disclosure, I'm no professor. <laughs> molecules, not atoms. And we all know what happens to people who believe everything they see on the internet. The answer lies in this movie I found on the internet. <laughs> Lizards in people's brains. So, please do some fact-checking and treat me like I hope you treat Wikipedia with caution. Can you prove anything you just told me? With all of those long-winded and probably useless disclaimers out of the way, let's get this show off the road and lift off into space. This is the human universe. Not the real universe, full of non-stop nuclear bombs and no air, but a metaphorical universe. Each one of these stars here represents a person. Now our sextronomers have surveyed countless metaphorical galaxies. And in every single one, they find two main types of inhabitant. In about half of all observed star systems, the life forms look like this. Hmm, yeah, it looks kind of familiar. And in the other 50-ish percent of systems, they look like this. Stop me if I'm going too fast for you. As you may or may not already know, this one's female and this one's male. This one can pop out babies. This one can put the babies in. Together, they make up approximately 99.999% of all the inhabitants of all known star systems. And by the way, these two are sexes, not genders. You humans get so blushy when people say the S-word, you started using another word just to be polite. But for this, we've got to be precise with that terminology. I remember this Doctor Who episode where they went back to 1950s London, and the Doctor was like, What gender is the Queen? And this other guy was like, She's a female. Wrong answer! Now in science land, the sexes are defined like so. This one makes the eggs, and this one makes the sperm. These are called gametes, and when you put them together, you get a baby. The female makes the eggs in ovaries, and the male makes the sperm in testes. And these are called gonads, which as we all know, is the eighth funniest word in the English language. That's what happens when gonads rule the roost. Now, just to be absolutely certain, you are the female of your species, right? In humans and other mammals at least, generally speaking, the female has a uterus, a vaginal canal, a vulva at the gate, and a clitoris for the sexy hell of it. The male keeps the testes in a convenient take-home cool bag and has a penis for both plumbing and recreational purposes. And all those things are a good rough guide, but there are some edge cases that I'll talk about later. But fundamentally, if you're a scientist or you just want to breed cute puppies or something and you want to know what sex something is, 
It all comes down to which kind of gametes it makes. So much information. And yet somehow, I feel as if I know it all already. But how do the eggs and sperm produced by females and males combine their powers and make babies? Well, I hope you already know how that works. So to keep this both safe for work and matching my slideshow backdrop, I'm going to explain it in the dorkiest way I can think of. Do not panic. Here we have what we like to call a star. Wow, wow, slow down, egghead. But not just any star. You see, this is a metaphorical star. But more precisely, it's an analogy. Because this is your sex drive. You heard me. This star represents the furnace of your libido. Your urge to get hot and sweaty and personal with a subject or object of your choice. What is the scientific term for the substance produced in the brain when one human being is attracted to another? Steam? It burns constantly throughout your life, more or less. And it started forming in your childhood. See this cloud? That's a proto-libido. It ain't cold. It ain't lifeless. There's some heat here, some activity, some tingly feelings that make you feel good. But it's not until puberty that things really kick into gear. That's thanks to hormones, which I'll talk about later on. Some people have cool, dim sex drives. Others are bright and hot. How often do you have intercourse? Two or three times. A month? No, a day. Sometimes they fade for a while or flare up for no reason. And most of the time they slowly cool as you get older, especially in males. And some don't quite ignite at all. Brown dwarfs, asexual. How often do you reach orgasm? Once. A day? No, only once. But no matter what kind of libido star you've got simmering away in your center, it's encircled by all kinds of personality and character. Planets, moons, asteroids, space whales, whatever the heck that is. Yes, yes, I'm a master of comedy. And out here, we find life. Intelligent life. Advanced and intellectual life. But not just cats, people too. Horny primates, basking in the rays and warmth of their sex drive. Driven to reproduce. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Please don't go. Please. But how exactly do these horny male and female inhabitants get out there to engage in some interstellar diplomacy? I'm glad you asked that. Well, it took a long time for our telescopes to pick out their spacecraft. But now, we know that human females fly around in pairs of X-wings. You see? See the shape there? X. X. It's clever, isn't it? Meanwhile, male starship squadrons consist of an X-wing paired with a Y-wing. And when their ambassadors meet up there in the wild reaches of space, the species perpetuates. Exhaust port is marked and locked in. Moving into position. You see, the eggs that a female produces will contain only one starship, an X-wing. And the sperm that a male produces contains only one starship as well, either an X-wing or a Y-wing. So when you fuse an egg and sperm together, you get a new combo squadron, either a female squadron or a male. And you wondered why your biology teacher was so keen to show you the Death Star trench run on the last day of term. Well, ruin that for you forever now. Look at the size of that thing. I've lost my main stabilizer. I can't pull out. Get clear, she's going to blow. That's not entirely accurate. Okay, okay, I call them starships to be cute, but technically they're chromosomes, you know, where you keep your genes. You think of it as an instruction manual or recipe book that each spaceship has on board to tell the next generation what to be. But sometimes that recipe has a few errors. errors. Now because human females have a pair of X wings and human males have an X and a Y, it's easy to make the mistake of thinking that biological sex is determined by the kind of starships you have. After all, most of the time, all of these things line up. Genetics, gonads, genitals, and graphical interface. Uh, you know, how you look. And in these videos, I'm usually gonna use this X and Y stuff as a shorthand for referring to males and females. But as always with everything in nature, that's not entirely... Shut up and get to the point! Some do have oddball combos, and these star systems are called intersex. For instance, in the CAIS globular cluster, the local starships are X and Y. More importantly, the gonad planets are testes, meant to make sperm. And that means male. But you'd never know it if you met a person from case space, because everyone there looks female. Yeah, even those bits you're wondering about, and from the outside anyway. In fact, they usually think of themselves as women, and have no idea they're scientifically male until some doctor notices their unusual internal plumbing. If you want more info, hit that pause button. 
Now, there are some unkind people and older textbooks who refer to every male as a man. But in the case of Case, that's pretty ridiculous. I'll talk more about it later, but for the moment, just keep in mind that it is possible for someone to be male on several biological levels, but be a woman for all practical life purposes. Uh, I can hear some of you raising your eyebrows right now about where I might be going with this. So let me just stop and make one thing clear. Intersex conditions are rare. There are a lot of different kinds of intersex, so if you lump them all together, the statistics seem bigger, but some of them barely do anything, and you never even know you had them unless someone checked you out. The serious ones that make your life awkward don't show up all that often. So, does the existence of intersex mean that biological sex is a spectrum? No! Remember, biological sex is determined by whether you make eggs or sperm. And since there's no such thing as a half sperm, half egg, it's always one or the other, sex is binary. Hmm. I feel like I, um, feel like I should repeat that for some reason. Binary, 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 binary. Stop me if I'm going too fast for you. Oh, uh, yeah, and sometimes people pretend to be intersex when they're not really. It happens. I know that. So don't believe everything you hear, even on YouTube. You're fake. You're just a copy. Anyway, intersex is often confused with transgender, but they're very different things. Intersex people are born with bodies that don't quite fit the standard model. We're not exactly uh, cut from the standard mold. Transgender people are born with bodies that are typically male or female, but they want to be, or feel like they are, the other sex or gender. Now, hang on a sec. I'm not talking transgender yet. Wait your turn. All right, mate, but watch it. I'll explain later. Oh, where was I? Oh yeah, diplomacy. There's something else I forgot to mention. Up to now, I've been talking about sexuality in terms of reproduction, making babies. But as we all know, there's more to it than that. What? Slow down, you're losing me. How is that possible? Prepare your bladder for imminent release! All civilization was just an effort to impress the opposite sex and sometimes the same sex. Your basic libido star has got an orientation. Think of it as your tilt. Straight systems want to climb onto the diplomacy table with the opposite sex. Gay male systems want to establish intimate trade relations with each other. Lesbian systems negotiate only with other female systems. I don't even like men. And bisexual systems Oh, those free traders sign trade agreements with whoever the heck they want. I like all the chocolates in the box. Do I look like an out of bounds sort of guy? That's not entirely... Huh? What? Oh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, Dr. Kinsey here wants to remind us that sexual orientation is actually more like a range, and you could pretty much have any degree of tilt. That's not... Although the Kinsey scale itself is considered a bit outdated these days. Sometimes you can even find your tilt flipping, like a confused pinball metaphor. That's it, I'm out of here. You can't make me. I'll talk more about the signs of homosexuality in later videos. I'll explain later. Prepare to be surprised. But the main thing to keep in mind is that you can't steer it. I can't control it! It's not a choice. You can only control what you do about it. Who you want sex with and who you have sex with aren't necessarily the same. Don't get the juice who we love. You ought to marry her and father some children right away. But did you ever get the feeling you're only going with girls because you're supposed to? That'd be a shame of who you are. So where does gender come into all this? Mm, that depends on who you listen to. And unlike sex, whichever definition I use for gender, some people are going to argue with me. But we need to keep it simple. So here's what I'm going with. If sex is your biology, male, female, or one of those two with twist, then gender is your social and legal category, man or woman. It's who you consider yourself to be and who everyone else considers you to be as well. She's definitely a girl. Oh, stop it. Usually, a male is a man and a female is a woman, but not always. For instance, as I mentioned, a person with CAIS is male, but calling her a man makes my brain explode. As another example, there are some places in the world where men bring home all the food or inherit all the property. So if your family only has daughters, 
You're out of luck. Unless... Light bulb. You pick one of your daughters to count as your son. That's a case where society decides your honorary gender for you, whether you like it or not. On top of that, there's gender role. And that's the way you act and the jobs you do. This beauty has four broilers, a casserole indicator, a fold-out ironing board, and down here, a foot-soaking tub. Since as a woman, you'll be standing in front of it all day. Oh, give me a buckus. Sometimes this is called masculinity and femininity. Combat's a man's job. Here's an example. If you're a male, you have tear ducts in your eyes. That's biology. But masculinity means boys don't cry. You can, you're just not supposed to. I promised I wouldn't cry. Now this is where it all starts to get messy. If boys don't cry, is that because they naturally don't feel the urge to cry as much as girls do? Or is it because they're taught by society not to cry? Of course I, I don't cry. Some people will tell you that being masculine or feminine is instinctive. It's built in. It is true what they say. Women are from Omicron Percy I-7. Men are from Omicron Percy I-9. While others will insist that society trains us, socializes us to behave in certain ways as we grow up. There is no difference between men and women. A war which has decimated a million worlds. For each side, the only acceptable outcome is the complete elimination of the other. Do males and females have different brains? Or are we all basically the same underneath? Is it a bit of both? Or is it something more complicated than that? Well, my opinion depends on whichever popular science book I read last week. And I don't want to get into a big debate here. I'll explain later. I can't deal with that now. Because that would only end up distracting you from the way more controversial stuff I'm going to discuss. However, one odd thing about this masculine-feminine divide is that masculine things are generally seen as better. Have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? <laughs> a woman who acts masculine might annoy a few people, but she gets a certain amount of respect. But a woman who acts feminine, even though that's seen as proper, risks getting dismissed as an airhead. Meanwhile, a man who acts feminine cops a lot of flack especially when it comes to clothes. A man wearing a dress? It feels weird and silly. It makes people uncomfortable. It pushes the boundaries. It's outside the gender norm. You've got to help me delete these stupid clothes. It's mega embarrassing. Of course, what I'm saying can differ depending on where and when you live. In Scotland, men used to wear kilts. And a kilt's a skirt. A manly one. But whatever the gender roles are, if you step outside them, <laughs> then people get weirded out. Okay, yet another disclaimer time. Everything I've said is incredibly basic, and some of you will strongly disagree with my definitions. And I'm going to cheat now and then for dramatic effect, or because I just got lazy writing my script. For example, by referring to trans women as male to female or MTF, I broke my rule before I even mentioned it. Makes trans women sound like they're fish. But I'm going to try to stick to this sex versus gender model anyway, because it's important. Because reasons. Which I can't tell you yet. Because spoilers. I'll explain later. New information, please. Stop! Where are you going? Are we doing transgender now? Why, yes. Yes, we are. It's about bloody time. Everyone ready? Seatbelts on. Deep breath. Contact! For a long time now, our sextronomers have known about a fairly rare group of human star systems called transsexual. Now you see... Oi, mate. That's another offensive term. You should use transgender. Go ahead, make my day. Ah, uh, mate. The thing is, in a lot of academic discussion, transsexual means a person who has had surgery done on their downstairs cupboard, if you know what I mean. Their genital anatomy. And a lot of transgender people don't go that far. So for the moment, let's stick to the people who do, to keep things simple. Please. The thing about a transsexual star system is that the inhabitants have the gametes of one sex, the starships of that sex, and, before any medical intervention, the bodies of that sex. Unlike an intersex person, if you saw a would-be transsexual person before transition without their clothes on, they would seem unambiguously male or female. But they try to match the physical traits of the other sex, and probably also try to conform to the social roles and behavior of that gender. Uh, before you get too annoyed at this cold and clinical way of talking, 
remember that I'm describing how it can look from the outside, not how it feels from the inside. A transsexual person who was born male might consider herself to be a woman, and she might train her voice to a higher pitch. That's a natural, physical, female trait. Typical voice range is built in. And he, or rather she, might also wear women's clothing. And that's a gender roles thing. Sometimes this urge to be like the other sex even extends to who you do diplomacy with. And of course, most famously, since male and female bodies look different, you might want to physically change your body. Not just to look more like the other sex, but to feel more at home in your body. Uh, results may vary if you don't live in the 23rd century. Biologically male people who identify as women are trans women. A girl. Biologically female people who identify as men are trans men. Of course, these days there's also a whole heap of gender non-binary identities, which as far as I can tell you basically get to make up yourself. No hard feelings, but I don't want to play. However, even though we talk about male to female or female to male trans people, unlike fish and some other animals that can literally change their sex, humans can't do it. At least, not yet. Not even us cats have cracked that one. Or if we had, we wouldn't tell you. So the best humans can do is take hormones and undergo surgery. You probably have a rough idea of what that surgery involves. And trust me, whatever you're picturing, it's worse. But hormone therapy is a bit more mysterious. So here's a quick rundown. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Hormones are chemicals that act like messengers in the body, telling your cells what to do. There are lots of them, but the two most important here are testosterone, a male sex hormone, and estrogen, a female sex hormone. They're made in the gonads. <laughs> Same place where the eggs or sperm are made, along with a couple of other places. Despite what you might assume, both males and females make testosterone and estrogen, just in different amounts. And the levels can vary naturally over time. But if you deliberately change how much testosterone or estrogen you have, it can affect a whole lot of things, like growing breasts if you have lots of estrogen, or growing hair on your face and chest if you have lots of testosterone. It can even affect your mood and your sex drive. And that's as far as I want to go into the weird and wacky world of space endocrinology for now, but just keep in mind that this stuff is really powerful. Even in small doses, messing around with your hormones is like pouring rocket fuel into the engine of your car. And some of the changes can't be undone, so you'd better know what you're doing and have some qualified professional to supervise you. But why are some people trans? Why would a biologically male person want to be a woman or feel like a woman? Or vice versa? Well, there's an old cliche that says that trans people are born in the wrong body. Like their brains got mixed up at the post office or something. And a lot of people assume that just like being straight or gay, you're either trans from day one or you're not and never will be. You're in my body and I'm in yours. We have our own minds. And I used to think that too. But it turns out being trans is a lot messier and more confusing than that. Some people don't figure it out for ages. How come? Well, that's what we're going to investigate. The whole world has changed before our eyes for the better. So much, so fast. It's glorious. Including whether or not I'm trans. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Yep, it's gonna get personal. And awkward. My sexual fantasies. Oh, and um, there's a ray gun battle with radical feminists. But that's just Tuesday in gender space. Wow. It'll be fun. I promise. Good luck. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. Uh, ignore that. We will explain later. 